I bid you good day. I bid you welcome. And I bring to you news. I bring to you news of those things that are near you, those things that are around you, those things that are a part of you. And yet, I bring you news of those things that you cannot yet see. Does it mean that they are not here yet? Oh, no. They are quite here. But you cannot see them. I bring you news of those things that are already and, in fact, have been a part of you and your life for some time. But you have not seen them. Some of you have perceived them, have become aware of them, have been told of them. Not grand surprises, not always. But still, where are they? Why cannot you see this for yourself? So our topic for this now time, then, is what you can see versus what you cannot see. What you can perceive versus what yet goes unperceived. Perhaps you have heard it say that the invisible realm is even more real than the physical. Well, I would confirm to you that this is true. However, how frustrating is that to hear? How frustrating from your point of view, to be told that those things that are most beautiful and most real cannot be perceived by your physical eyes. And yet we will look into a variety of places and planes of consciousness to explore this interesting subject. Imagine the beauty of conception. Well, you cannot see that taking place other than through a very particular microscope and yet many are aware of the moment of that the moment of conception physically you can comprehend this idea there is a moment at which an idea is also conceived and yet this also goes unseen. It belongs to the realm of the mind, to the realm of thoughts, where thoughts come together, and you cannot see thoughts. They are non-physical things. Or are they? So you begin to gather our conversation, then. What things are visible, and what things are not? What can you see? Can you imagine that you could see the birth of a thought, that you could see the birth of an idea taking place? Well, those who assist you in many ways do. The many guides who work with you and near you, they are aware of when you are coming very close to conceiving of a new idea. How is it that they know when you are on the threshold and about to cross into a new plane, a new directive of consciousness? They can see it with eyes, but they are not physical eyes. In essence, then, we must begin our discourse by acknowledging that the physical eyes have more limitations, perhaps, than you have come to realize. Yes. To have vision and sight is very, very important. But sight and vision are not exactly the same. Sight, then, far sight, near sighted, has more to do with the physical realm, the near physical reality, the things associated with the physical senses that can be touched, that you can reach for, that you can imagine that you will have tomorrow or the next day. And so those things, those nearsighted, far-sighted things, 
that are in some way linked to the brain's imagination. These are also hardwired to all of your thought processes, all of the thinking processes of the brain. Now, the brain is a very amazing machine. It can process many, many things and thoughts and ideas. And based upon these, it sends that information in all of the variety of ways that it does so that all of your senses can perceive, can sense everything that the brain senses. And so you do. In terms of sight, then, you are able to see everything that the brain sees. So the brain sees first, and then your eyes see. And then based upon what you see, all of the other senses also become enlivened in this particular description that we have. It is not being said that if the eyes do not physically see that the other senses are not at work. But here and today, we are concentrating upon the physical eye sight. At another time, we will concentrate upon the other senses, and much more will be discovered about those as well. The physical eyes then sense, perceive, or see, as you call it, what the brain instructs the eyes to see on its behalf. If the brain does not or cannot conceive of an idea, a thing, a place, or a thought, you would not be able to see it, not in your mind's eye, not with the physical eyes. So in order for you to see something, it must first be acknowledged, reckoned by the brain, the local brain, the local thoughts, meaning everything associated with your physical reality and your physical life. That is what we will call your localized reality, local reality. As you begin to perceive, then, the ideas associated with time and place and understanding all of these directives then come from brain, local brain, to thought, to eyes. And so you see an image or even a thought in front of you. What would happen if your brain were not able to conceive of a thought or an idea? purple ball in front of you, if your brain could not conceive of the idea of a purple ball in front of you, your eyes would not see it, even if it was there, even if it were right in front of you. Perhaps you would come in contact with it and then your brain or your thought would say, there is something new in this environment, and then it would become part of the environment. But the thoughts and brain associated with an object, a thing, a thought, in order for them to be real or realized in your local environment, they must become part of the process, the need, the understanding, or the directive. So, what we are saying is that the ideas that are present in your life, the realities by which you direct yourself, are part of what is fed to you, part of what your understanding offers to you. And this is supplied by brain, brain waves to be specific, the very waves by which all things travel to you and through you. The local brain is stimulated then by all those things that it believes, all those things that it has been told or has stored in this local area. It is localized then. Those things that are real belong to your local, real environment. Things that you have seen, 
or touched or been told about or encouraged to have, to be, or to do. Everything falls under this normal range. For instance, you have been told that you cannot see under certain infrared circumstances, that the eyes cannot detect under those circumstances. Therefore, you cannot. You have been suggested that under certain ultraviolet frequencies you could not see or perceive with your normal natural eyesight. It is not normally accessible to you. The brain has this idea, this belief. The eyes must follow it. Therefore, although the eyes are lenses and can see what light dances or touches or surrounds a subject with, if the brain does not agree to that, you would not see it. Now, for the simplest of examples, we have used the purple ball introduced into an environment. Under certain criteria, then, you could not or would not see it. A very normal, very simple object, but under certain criteria, it is possible that you would not see it. Of course, that is the simplest of examples. Now, let us take a more complex example. Something new is added to the environment. Something new or different becomes part of your world, of humanity's world, of the earth. If brain does not conceive it, does not agree with it, if it is a paranormal event, a metanormal event, it is likely, it is entirely possible that you would not see it, no matter how real it was, if you could touch it even, if it were right next to you, if you could feel its breath, if it were that, even then you would not see it. Now, why is this subject important at this time? It is not to perplex you, it is not to confound you, or to belittle you and to say, look what you cannot do. It is, in fact, to bring awareness to you, and as you hear these words in Gaia's own frequency, they also stimulate certain corridors of thought within you that remember, that remembers those things that can be seen with a different part. You see, your eyes are intelligent eyes. There is a lens that sees those things that are physical. Your eyes also have another lens, and these have not been in use for some time, for a very long period of time, in fact. Has it not occurred to you why it is that so many among you wear corrective lenses? Has it occurred to you how so many human beings could have such poor eyesight that they could see the foreground but not the background, the background but not the foreground? It is because there are other aspects of your eyes, of the lenses there, that are being corrected for this reality corrected for this world and for all those things that you are accustomed to perceiving. Those things that you are accustomed to perceiving, you now wish to see in sharper ways, more in focus, as you say. But the eyes as well, when the focus is softer, in the mid-ground, not in the foreground, not in beyond, in the mid-ground, in the periphery, that is where these lenses can become sharp or sharpened with a bit of instruction, with a bit of recall for other times and places in which you have engaged this. Therefore the eyes perceive or see what other parts of the eyes would say, nope, 
There is nothing there. Nothing but empty space in front of me. I'm certain of it. I don't see anything there. Now, some, the more sensitives in your mist, perceive. Oh, yes, there's something there. I feel it. I sense it, they will say. And they have become accustomed to not seeing it. Perceiving? Well, yes. Sensing, yes, but not seeing. Why? Why not to see? What you perceive is, after all, a breath away, a thought away. In this reality, in the near place, but you do not see it. And so what is taking place now is within your own physiology. It is rearranging itself where there is permission for it to do so. Where there is the ability to do so, the brain, the most active part, the most futuristic or worldly part, where the beliefs are not so hardwired, the brain can begin now to move into, to bridge other gaps and areas, so that it can, in fact, and will begin to see the new world, the next world, ideas and realities. You will note that the eyes, your physical eyes currently, they squint in the bright light. They cannot see into the bright sun. In the darkness, it requires a goodly amount of time to focus before one can see at night clearly, and even then not completely, not as the animals do. Well, long ago humanity did have the ability to see into the brightest of lights and into the darkest of nights as well. The eyes would adjust much more quickly. One set of lenses would fold into one another, would fold vertically. The others were more horizontal in nature. Imagine something a little bit like a star pattern, but one that folds into itself and then out again. In this way, you, humanity, could see, perceive much more of what was around you. That is one aspect of our conversation, the physical eyes and what they can and cannot perceive. The purpose behind this conversation, that which is truly worth exploring, is what is there to see, what is changing in your environment. What are you missing? What could you see or what could you draw to yourself? Well, indeed then, comes the idea that what is in the physical world is proximate to you, is dense, physical atoms that have become so densified as to become part of this world. Well, with so much discussion about the next world, what is in the next world? What will you see or touch or know or discover? That which is lighter. That which is lighter has less density to it. This means more than simply that it may weigh a little bit less. Those things that have less density or higher frequency as the correspondences go have more space between the atoms, the molecules. That space is not empty space. It is intelligent space. So what is near and around you now is intelligence. It is a higher order of intelligence. It is thought, but arranged in a higher order. Can you see intelligence? In fact, yes, you can. You can see it. You can feel it. 
you can see intelligence, you can see intelligent thoughts forming. Now, here is an example that I will give to you, one that is very current. Why do you believe that although you cannot see it of your own accord, your digital cameras are capturing orb images? Yes, you can see that how light arranges itself and with the quickness of the lens of the camera, that is what is being captured, that form of light. You are surrounded by orbs all of the time. Many of these orb-like images are thoughts. Do you wish to know what thoughts look like? Many very creative and intelligent thoughts look like orbs. Now, if you see a cluster of these at times, it is thought that is as yet unordered. It is thought. It is subject. It is arrangement. It is light that has not yet dispersed into individuality or uniqueness. It has not been called upon yet. Do all thoughts look like orbs? No. Not necessarily. But ideas that are conscious or near conscious, semi conscious, do because they have arranged themselves into that shape. Notice that the example that I gave you of the physicalness was a purple ball, the shape of an orb. That, even that, you could not perceive unless the brain says, Oh, that is intelligent thought that perceives to me. It belongs in my environment. I accept that in my environment. In terms of the orbs, then, many have accepted into the environment of the photographic world that orbs present themselves there and that light shined on and through them in such a way captures that image. It is there in the picture. It must be there around you. So here you have the introduction of a thought that now is already in your world. Now currently the belief is, yes, the camera's lens can capture that. Well, if the camera lens can capture it, why cannot your physical eyes do the same? And the answer is that they can. In fact, they can. And in fact, they do. And in fact, you will capture that and much more. The process then involves desensitizing the brain and making it more sensitive in other areas, other areas of the brain that correspond to the other lens of the eyes. It is not truly a difficult subject matter. It is no different than a switch. One goes on and the other goes off. Well, in this case, the two can be turned on together, but the brain does not quite know it yet. It is being informed of that. The newer generations, for the most part, already have that. Generations that have been upon the planet, upon the earth for some time, do not have the clear ability to do so yet. So it must be brought into the environment by one or more ways. The photographic way is one of them. The brain, or you, what you call you, becomes accustomed to what is captured in the lens and under certain conditions of light. Now, what is missing from this equation is that you have not necessarily been told what orbs are. Oh, they are light mysterious, light dancing. Delightful you are when you find one in your photographs. You are so delighted. Some part of you knows it is something that pertains to you, applies to you. 
Some part of you knows that everything is arranged this way. And this is what you arrange yourself as well. Now, if you could see yourselves, your bodies, your subtle bodies, as you appear to those that guide you, many times you appear as a series of orbs as well. Sometimes very heavy ones, very dense ones, that appear to look like a chain. A chain of seven, for instance. Seven chakras a chain of seven densities, a chain of seven worlds or seven moons strung one to the other. And, depending upon how each one is arranged, sometimes there is the double moon or the double orb, the intersected ones. Sometimes one appears as a shadow, in front of one, behind the other, next to one another. Sometimes it appears very much like a cluster that is moving together and apart. And so here each one has its own rhythm, its own identity, if you like. No two are alike. And yet the idea of what you are and how you are arranged and how you can combine and recombine yourself, that is a matter of the world itself. Well, this world is changing now. The world in some ways is ending, rearranging, remaking and beginning. This means that many of the ideas about you, about your world, about what is real and about what is seen and unseen is also changing now. Therefore, again, the importance of these words is how you receive them and what you will do with them upon receiving them. If you will treat this discussion simply as a conversation of words, oh, how interesting, Guy, I had not thought of that. Thank you, I will file it here upon the shelf. Then that is one relationship that you will have with information. If instead you will say, hmm, so there is another world right here, there is another reality right here, and with my eyes open and in plain sight I have not seen it yet, what can I shift or change about my awareness then? In so doing you would be giving an instruction, a free will instruction to your brain, to the world, to the local world that you live in, to expand, to expand its thought process, to expand its horizon, so that the parts of the physical eyes that perceive will remain awakened. But now you will see, if you give to yourself not the physical instruction to see, because your eyes, after all, cannot see the invisible until it receives a message from the brain to begin to perceive that. That is what we are after here. We are after a deeper, grander communication with the brain and its thoughts and its world. We are after the idea of reorganizing the structure of these thoughts from what it considers normal to an expanded version of that normal, something that is greater than normal, something that is normal plus, normal in the new world, an expanded view of normal, an expanded view of what you are able to participate in, to see, to touch, to feel, to guide, to receive. The world is changing. We offer this to your thought. We offer this to the processes that take place within you, that the fields that surround you, that spiral about you, begin to de-densify, de mystify those things that are invisible to you. Now, 
once you give to yourself this decision this instruction at first the brain will say yes in the next moment it will say but nothing has changed nothing is unique or different that is also very true and so the next instruction then is to give the brain the instruction that you would like to begin to see those things that are transparent in nature and to have these revealed to you this is an important distinction and one that must be noted there is quite a difference between invisible and transparent for instance orbs are invisible to you but under certain circumstances they are revealed they did not come out of their invisible structure they became transparent you saw a transparency therefore a transparency is something that you can see through those things that are invisible remain invisible or out or beyond your ability to see or perceive them so in order to bring this new vision of perceiving those things that are near enough to the new world to you to bring them into transparency that is the next step those things that are transparent you will more than likely see an outline to now take care here because in the beginning some of them may appear to be shadow like so it is important that you do not think oh dear and that is a dark thing coming to me at me no no not at all but here light must shine upon it from one angle or another from a new angle therefore you will see an outline and depending upon the angle of light that is cast upon those things in your environment you will see an outline and that outline may come in a variety of shades of color or shadows of color you see it is no more than the adornment of light as it comes dressed now do not yet do not now expect to see beings not yet however begin to expect to see things objects symbols ideas and yes orbs in daylight lighter forms of thought you may find yourself momentarily light-headed or transformed so you may wish to practice this exercise a simple exercise of perception in moments in which you will not be easily flustered certainly not while you are piloting one of your vehicles in the brighter lights in a sitting motion allow yourself to dance with your eyes looking up and down and around not by making yourself dizzy more as if it was a wave where you allow your eyes to travel naturally from a heightened room or to its ceiling down to its floor around from all the way to the left as you are able to extend your peripheral vision all of the way to the right and then beyond it as well then place your perception behind you as well as if you had eyes in the back of your head then you will begin to arrange yourself again to do the same and you will push in a sense with your eyesight with your thoughts push not so that your eyes become tired in the process here you are not pushing your physical eyes to see because it is with other lenses other corrective lenses that you have within you that you will begin to see out of your periphery above beyond underneath through and around 
Another exercise you may perform is to place a rather simple but large object before you or sit in front of one that is there and motionless and imagine your eyes then moving around that object so that you can see it from a different perspective. It can be a bookcase, it can be a mountain, it can be a rock, can be a piece of furniture if you like. You may make this as simple as you like and as delightful as if you wish. Now, it is important, at least in the beginning, to work with those things that are considered physical or dense. That is how you will be able to see the difference. For instance, if you placed yourself in front of an ocean with the movement of already the liquid water, it would be more difficult to perceive what has changed or to see with different eyes. The idea here is to begin to see with your brain through a different part of your eyes. Yes, it is your physical eyes that we are speaking of, and at the same time there are other lenses, other corrective, correction lenses. In this case, we are correcting what one world has presented to you in favor of what the next world is already bringing near enough to you. If we had approached this subject last year, twelve months prior to this moment, you would have seen less. If and when, in fact, we approach this subject again next year or in several months, it will already have arranged itself again. So here there are a variety of ideas by which you can share yourself quite interestingly. And in the moment, it is for you to begin to rearrange your reality, to disassemble what you consider to be most normal. We are rearranging your eyesight in how it is perceived in the same way that you might choose to rearrange a room to suit you better. Perhaps you will rearrange the furniture in the room to suit more light coming in. After all, that is what this is about. Now, what else is in the invisible realm for you to perceive of or interact with? What else can we do to sweeten this exercise. Well, in essence, what is near enough to you now are newer ideas of who you are, a newer image of you. Perhaps you have heard say that there is another that is just like you, your twin, your idea of self, your mirror self. That also exists as light. And it can be just near enough to you that you could almost see yourself in your own environment. Now, if you were to see that now, it would almost shock you. It would seem a little bit troublesome to you, perhaps, if you were to, with your physical eyes, see some one, some thing that looked exactly like you in front of you in the same environment. Something about that would not seem right. But now let us collect the thoughts together. Where are you in this moment? Are you certain that where you dwell is in this now body that you occupy? Can you not just as easily place your awareness across the room and say, now I am there? Well, if you could just as easily do that with your awareness, then you could, with a little bit more help and practice, also assemble just the right quality of light, just the right frequency of sound by which to assemble another version of you. Before you think this is rather too strange, is it not the concept of bi-location that we are speaking of? 
would it not be that you would construct another version of you with your awareness so that you could see elsewhere perceive of other environments and like that so here is an added benefit those things that seem to you extraordinary if they were indeed possible at all how could i arrange myself just so that i could be here and be there also well this is the beginning of that idea here is another benefit then I do not say to you it is immediately possible for you to arrange yourself in such a way. However, it is, in fact, quite possible and probable with very little work on your part. The work comes more from the brain. The work comes more from what the brain can be easily convinced to believe or to do or what you must struggle against. If you struggle against the tide of what is normal, of what every other person can or cannot do, that only a few special or extraordinary peoples have been known to do this or that, if you struggle with these ideas, then it will be longer by which you see or use this second sight. There is a word that you are comfortable with, second sight. That is exactly what it is. So second sight is the ability to see those things that are invisible. And then, once they become perceived by you, or perceived at least in your environment as real, that is when they become transparent. A little bit like when you perceive someone that has told you a truth, or someone that has told you a non-truth. They become transparent. The truth has revealed itself. Well, this is the same, but it is more than the truth. It is a concept, it is an idea, it is a thing, a thought, or a person. The law is the same. The law that makes those things transparent applies to all things. And it is only how it is applied by thought or brain by capacity. What belongs to the local world or the local environment or one that seems much grander. Well, the world is becoming smaller then. Your world, this world, is becoming smaller. It is beginning to contract. It is becoming more dense. That means that even those things that have been invisible until now, they are becoming visible. They are coming into the visible range. This applies to all things. Think in terms of your astronomical discoveries. Certainly, telescopes can now see much further. They can perceive of other galaxies, other solar systems, other planets, and yes, other universes. If telescopes can now see and perceive and bring into reality those things, well, the laws are the same. The rules apply to all things. Therefore, they also do apply to you. You may use these laws to bring into the physical those things that you wish to see, perceive, have proximate to you, become aware of. And so the instruction now goes to brain. Show me those things that are proximate to me. Show me those things that I have been oblivion, oblivious to. Those things that were far enough away that were part of oblivion before, I now draw into my awareness, my arena of consciousness. I bring them near to me. I make them local, in the local universe, in my local environment. I bridge the gap between here and there. I choose those things that were invisible to become transparent, those things that were transparent to become opaque, to enter the visible range. Now, take care in this way that you do not draw these things or thoughts too close to you. It is not that you must have them be physically materialized to you. It is not necessary. 
the importance here is to train you, mind, brain, to see the invisible, to make transparent, to use the lenses of the eyes. The exercise is not to take those things that are invisible or transparent and force them into third density. It is you that wish to move into the lighter worlds. Do not force the lighter worlds into your density. Notice how it is that you have many guides and teachers that surround you, yet the moment you try to coax them into manifesting for you, becoming physical for you, you feel them pull away. They do not wish to be drawn into this world. They wish to assist you by drawing you into the next thought or the higher world. This applies the same. Use what is given to you. It is a light instruction. Literally, it is working with light, with visible light. Do not bother to overtax the eyes in this case. Remember, it is the brain that sees. The brain gives instruction to the eyes, and the eyes will see or perceive or bring near enough. And so the eyes are remaking themselves. This instruction is for you for your awareness, for your thought waves to repattern themselves. The instruction is not for corrective lenses for the eyes. That will come. We speak then of those things that are invisible. How many other beautiful, imaginative, creative things and thoughts dance around you? near enough to you, but you do not see them yet. The purpose of this gathering, then, the purpose of these ideas coming together, is to assist that process, to bring the non-visible into the visible, to bring your awareness, your frequency, to the next level, one step up the ladder, one step over to the side. You will note that as we continue to gather, you will have newer, other subjects to explore, each one stretching you just a little bit further, each one allowing both mind and brain to listen, to participate, to engage. We are engaging the next world now. We are engaging newer truths, making them available to you. I tell you that these are advanced discourses and that we will continue in this gauge now. Attune yourselves then to the voice, to the frequency, and to your desires as the new and next worlds come very, very near to you. Well done. Until the next moment, I bid you good day.